All right, today I'm going to be disassembling and cleaning for the first time the new Kimber Shadow Ghost 1911. Um, I took it to the range the other day, put about 150 rounds through her. She runs great, looks great, feels great. Everything on this gun is great. I really like this. This is one of my new favorite guns right now. I went out and bought two Pro Mag 10 round mags because the seven rounder is obviously a little small. These 10 round mags, I don't have another video on what I did, but I had to do a lot of polishing. There was some really rough welds on the back of these Pro Mags, so beware of these cheaper Pro Mags. They might not. They claim they fit all the government models. They don't. It's just, it's just a quality thing. I got them on eBay, so there was no return policy for that particular seller. I knew what I was getting into. If you ever come up with a Pro Mag, I do understand that Pro Mag does have a lifetime warranty as long as you buy them from an authorized dealer. So Pro Mag will replace them for the life as long as there's some type of manufacturer's defect. And like I said, this was. But since I got them on eBay, warranty is kind of void. I like what I did to them. Eventually, I'm going to blue them um, like the original. But for right now, I'm going to be doing the first time cleaning. I've got the two 10 round mags, which I'll be testing probably within the next couple of weeks. But for right now, they cycle dummy rounds fine. I'm also going to be installing a Wilson Combat ambidextrous thumb safety. And I'm also going to be installing this Clonimus mainspring housing. I also got this on eBay. But eBay says that this Clonimus brand is pretty good. They get a lot of good reviews. So I'm going to try it out and see how I like it. So first things first. Let's set all of this stuff off to the side. There's no ammunition on the desk. The gun is clear. No ammunition around. Okay, so first step in disassembly, you get your handy dandy disassembly tool, and let's get the slide off. So, this particular Kimber not only has a match grade trigger, but it's also got a full length guide rod assembly. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to get this mainspring out. This tool is a real avid 1911 tool. It's got the government size barrel bushing on one side, and on the other side, it's got an officer size barrel bushing. You can go online and look if you're interested on the different sizes of the 1911s. This is a full size five inch Kimber model or government, government model 1911. Okay, so we just insert, we push hard, and we turn the mainspring housing clockwise. And that takes a little bit of effort. Click, and then very slowly, we release the mainspring. We do this first, this way that there's no tension on the slide when we disassemble it. And we pull, you can pull the mainspring housing out at this point, that'll come out, and you see here's your guide rod is floating around in there. So let's get the slide off. To get the slide off, hammer cocked back. You can see it's dirt. I don't like dirt on my hands, but that's okay. Throw that over there. Now, to get the slide off, you get a half way back in the travel. There are two dimples in the slide. One is for your slide lock. That's what happens when you lock back on an empty magazine. The other one is your disassembly notch. So you put it so the disassembly notch is right at the slide lock and you press the pin on the other side of the slide lock and that will push the slide lock up and out. And you pull that straight up and out. That's your slide lock. Now there's nothing holding the slide in place. The slide slides completely off. You notice you don't have to pull the trigger. On a lot of striker fired guns, you have to pull the trigger to get the slide off. This is not a striker fired gun, this is a hammer gun. Single action, and the slide comes off. So let's disassemble the slide. So now with the slide off, we take the guide rod out. And like I said, this is a full length guide rod, which means this guide rod goes all the way to the front of the gun and the guide rod plunger has a hole in it where the rod moves in and out. 
okay? On a standard 1911, standard 1911 has a short guide rod, and this plug is covered with most likely a knurled cap. But because this has a full length rod, this will prevent the spring from doing this inside the gun, and it just ensures for better cycling. So that's a nice addition by Kimber. So to get the barrel out, the barrel bushing has a tab. You turn the barrel bushing counterclockwise, and there's a tab inside that allows the barrel bushing to come out of the slide. You just gotta wiggle it a little bit, and out she comes. And there is the tab, right there. So there's the barrel bushing is out. You put the key forward and slide the barrel straight forward and out of the slide. Now normally this is enough to have you clean the gun because this is the first time that I am cleaning. I am going to completely take this down and we're going to continue on the disassembly of the slide. So to continue disassembly we have to push the spring forward for the firing pin and pull this plate out. So we're going to get a punch. We're going to push that forward and be sure that you don't let this go. It's not a lot of spring tension, but it is some. Okay? And once that's forward, you can carefully slide that out and make sure this is not pointing in your face. You want to get the punch back on that to retain it. So now there's your block. Out comes the spring and firing pin. Okay, that's your spring and your firing pin. Out the back should come your ejector. That's your ejector. And I do believe that's it for this particular, yes. There was another piece on a standard 1911, but like I said, this is not exactly your standard 1911. Every one has a little bit different design, so the Kimber doesn't have that other piece that's in there. So anyway, that's your slide, okay? So that slide is completely taken apart. At this point, you can clean it, you can oil it, We'll do that and put it off to the side because all of our other work is going to have to be on the frame. You can clean this however you want. You can use an ultrasonic cleaner. There are no plastic parts here on this gun, on this top section. Okay. Um, for me, I'm just going to wipe everything down with some Hops 9. I'm going to clean the barrel. Don't forget, do your best bet when you're cleaning the barrel. Go from go from uh, firing chamber to muzzle. Okay, you got to go push everything out that way, and use your favorite gun oil. Okay, so now that we have the barrel cleaned, we've got everything cleaned. The slide can go back together. So, very simply, we're going to put the trigger parts back in first so you've got your ejector you've got your firing pin and spring and you've got your block so let's put the that aside I oiled the inside of the barrel in addition to cleaning it everything is wiped down so you want to give this stuff a little love when you put it in so um, reverse removal we're going to put the uh, ejector in first and this is a little synthetic grease if you've watched my other videos you've heard of me talk about it before um, it's basically just synthetic chassis grease and synthetic engine oil um, it's a great lubricant um, again the 1911 the AR-15 they love lubricant okay so we put that in, and when you put this into the slide, let me put this. Okay, when you put this into the slide, it goes in 
there are a little notch right here and you want the ejector facing into the chamber so that goes in exactly like that okay then the firing pin and spring and again a little bit on the firing pin and spring and just make sure if you're using a brush that you don't get any bristles caught on there okay that goes in here and then gets dropped into the slot on the inside just like that okay now we have to put our barrel bushing um, barrel bushing <laughs> we're gonna put our block back in and the block goes in in exactly the same order that we took it out Get a little grease off I don't think I could do that twice again okay start the block in let's get it positioned in there correctly it goes into the slot and then we push our trigger and spring back down you see that that's a little bit of pressure but that block should go right and in she goes till it clicks and that's where the firing pin comes through and you want to give that a quick depression you just want to make sure that it's poking through in the front that there it moves freely and if I get it right in there it moves freely okay so that's the way that's supposed to go now we can put our barrel back in and again I put a little bit of lube on the full length of the barrel a little bit on here and barrel bushing goes on all right so that barrel bushing all right that gets folded down and into the slide she goes barrel bushing goes in and then gets turned completely around to the other direction to allow the spring to go in put a little bit on the end here and drop and scratch make sure you drop and scratch everything all over the place okay guide rod goes in that's got to be flipped up guide rod goes in and there's a little half moon on the bottom of that that goes onto the barrel that goes in there just like that okay and if you want you could just put your spring in that goes up against there goes all the way up and then just put your button on that's as far as we're going to go with the slide. All right, and now we can start on the frame. All right, disassembly of the frame. We'll begin by the grips. Super easy. They're just screws. Take the grips off. Okay, now, just as a side note, that grip didn't want to come off, so just as a side note, see this piece right here? This, we're going to cut this out with a very sharp blade, because this is where the ambidextrous safety is going to go on the right side of the gun. So, grips are off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the safety out. So to pull the safety out, you have to know a couple of things. First of all, this has got a spring-loaded piston inside here. This is your keeper, and this is two sides. So it's got one on this side and one on this side. 
it's going to come out this way unless it's being kept in place by either a little, they, they crush the edge of it or swage it. So you're going to put the safety at about a half cock right about here. And then it should wiggle free. But you want to keep your thumb over here by the hammer in case that piston comes flying out. And it did not, which is a good thing. So there's your safety. And here comes your piston and your spring. And it's both sides. And we'll leave that together and put that up let's over there. The main spring out. And that pushes out. So let's get our block. And let's push our mainspring housing out. You see there's two sides to it. One side has a dome and the other side has a dimple. And you want to push from the dimple to the dome. If you attempt to force it in the other direction, it's not going to go or it's going to break. So let's give that a quick little wrap. There we go. And that will come out. There's your pin. And your mainspring housing will slide out the bottom. And there is a spring on this. So you just hit it with your finger. You see the spring right inside there? Just push that down a little bit. And that'll take the tension off this mainspring housing. And then the mainspring housing comes out. And I'm glad I'm changing it now that we're talking about it. Because this is plastic. How interesting. So mainspring housing. So now the grip safety falls out because that's being held in place by the hammer and the frame mainspring. Okay. So the frame mainspring will now just come out the bottom. So now that the mainspring is out, you have the pin for the hammer comes out and you can see that's got a little dimple on it so that only comes out one way and out slides your hammer all right so let's keep the hammer spring with the hammer the hammer pin with the hammer and next is going to be your sear pin and that's the sear pin right up there and this comes out the one side again you've got a pin with a head on it so that comes out and then your sear should come out with that. And there we go. That comes out in two pieces just. To get the, the last two things are your magazine release and your trigger. So the magazine release comes out like this. You've got a little Allen head in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to rotate this clockwise about a quarter of a turn. So you're going to push the magazine release out and then actually counterclockwise, I'm sorry, counterclockwise by about a quarter turn until you hear a snap. Okay, and I heard the snap, but I guess, I don't know if I heard that on video, then your magazine release comes out. It gets caught in this catch right in here and you can see that's where the pivot is right in that little slot. You see, you can push it in, you can actually pivot, and then there's a spring that comes out. But we're going to leave that together for right now. All right, and that concludes the disassembly. Oh, your trigger. Sorry about that. Trigger slides out the back. Okay, and that concludes the disassembly of the frame. So first things first, let's start off with the ambidextrous safety. So let's take a look at this. And let's see what modifications we're going to have to make to do this. So, other than saying it has to be installed by a competent gunsmith, that's the limit of the instructions on that safety. So, this is what we're going to do. So, see this safety? This comes together like this. It's got a little tongue and groove that fits together. All right? You want to make sure that fits together nice and it doesn't have any play to it, okay? If there's any type of play to it or anything like that, it's gonna not work correctly. The right side is much thinner than the left side. 
equal. Excuse me, because the right side, because the right side is going to be retained by that slot that we're going to cut in the grip. So that's going to go right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a sharp knife. Let's put this frame over on the side. Let's get our block back up here. I'm going to take a sharp knife and I'm going to make two scores. And this is going to be super easy because this is rubber. This is a rubber grip. You don't have to cut into it hardly at all. Look at that, just like butter. All right, if you have a wood or a metal grip, then it's gonna take a little bit more work than what I just did. But that is super easy with the stock rubber grips that come with the this particular Kimber. And that's as far as that's gonna go. That's all you need to retain that safety in there, okay? So that's as far as the grip modification goes. So, now's the time to begin reassembly. So, we're just gonna do a cursory wipe down of some of these parts. You can see this trigger has an over-travel stop, which is real nice, and that's adjustable through the front of the trigger so we're not going to touch that because I had no trouble with overstop over travel the trigger goes in see how that bevel is in the back that's angled it matches the bevel of the uh, magazine well so that's that so the trigger goes back now, in you've got your disconnector your sear okay so these things go in a particular hole okay so there's a hole up here in the frame, all right? And what you wanna do is you wanna put your sear and your disconnector together, kinda of like that, all right? So you want the hook facing up, and this is gonna be the part that goes up into the frame. So you want that facing up, and you want the spade, the flat part of the spade facing the front of the frame. So you want that in there like that. And let's use one of these Allen keys real quick just to locate everything and there's a hole Let's see if we can see it you could see the hole right in the top of the the frame right in there so that's where the that's where the disconnector is going to go slide that up in there and drop that through and let's see if I got that nope I missed the sear so it's going to take a little bit of, of finagling for you to get it done, but it'll go in there. Okay, and let's put slide it through there real quick, and let's make sure everything moves. All right, so we're good. So that's what it's going to look like when it's in there like that, okay? And you're going to be able to see the disconnector through the hole in the top, all right? So let's get our pin and run our pin through. And perfect, okay? So that's the sear and the disconnector. So next thing we're going to do is um, we've got our spring all right and again just a little bit and this is mostly just for preservation there's a slot back here okay so the spring is going to sit in there in that slot like that okay and then we're going to put our main spring in there now this main spring is already assembled so what I'm going to do, instead of disassembling it and lubricate, I'm just going to put a drop of oil in there. And I'm going to work that a little bit. All right. Get any excess out of there. Okay. 
Gonna slide that up in there. Come on, baby. Perfect. All right, there's a spring, and now let's get our hammer. So the hammer now goes in. So the hammer, again, gets a little bit of goobity goop. Hammer goes in just like that. Gets slid all the way up into place. Hammer pin goes through. There we go. Okay. So the hammer pin is in. And why isn't it rotated correctly? Because I don't have... There we go. Okay, come on, there we go, perfect, okay, all right, good, all right, so now we're going to line up the strut for the hammer with the mainspring housing and push that back into place. Come on. There you go. Okay. And once you push that in, you should start feeling some. You should start feeling some pressure on that mainspring housing. All right. But don't push it all the way in just yet because we got to put our grip safety in. That's my wife laughing upstairs. She's got a very distinctive laugh. All right, so let's put our grip safety in there. And our grip safety goes in, just like that. And let's put another pin through it just to hold on to it. See, that's the way that grip safety moves. And now, once we make sure the mainspring's in place, we can push the rest of the mainspring in. Okay, see how that's going to try to spring out on me? So we're going to push that, try to do this with one hand on camera, okay? Let's push the mainspring in and put the mainspring pin through. There we go, okay? And you can give that a couple of rapidy wraps. Come on, baby. Sure, that's all the way to the other side. Let's use a wider punch. Okay, I gotta use two hands. and a little bit too far through the other side but that's okay we're going to correct that in a minute all right so let's check the spring and everything for proper operation okay so you've got your grip safety you've got your trigger and your trigger doesn't key unless the grip safety is pushed and then hammer releases okay so that's a good thing so that's together correctly so now let's put the ambidextrous safety in okay in the spirit of full disclosure uh, almost three weeks have gone by so what's happened was I completely screwed this up and this is not something you can screw up this is the main thumb safety on this handgun so while fitting the original Wilson I 
buggered that all up. Let me see if I can get a little closer. You see all that? That that's that's just absolutely ridiculous. Trying to get it fitted, trying to do this, trying to do that. So I went and talked to a buddy of mine who put me in touch with a gunsmith that was actually willing to give me a few pointers on fitting the safety. So a couple of things that I screwed up. First of all, uh, I should have removed some of the coating off that safety. This is a different brand. This is no longer a Wilson Combat. Um, this is, you can see the difference in the thickness. I will be going back to a Wilson Combat safety at some point, but I got a cheaper safety. So I got two of them so I could practice on for this video. So this is the original. And if you see the way it's cut, it was very difficult to figure out what each of the little shapes do. Bottom line is this concaved area here is where the safety actually stops. And when you move the safety off that, okay, it gives room for the sear and the hammer to move. When you put the safety up, it contacts this point here and stops it from moving and it must stop it dead there must be no play it must be a perfect fit if there's any amount of play there's a possibility that the sear could disengage and the hammer could drop then he told me to remove the coating on the inside to clearance this in here to go around the frame of the handgun so now we have a perfect fit this goes in and fits flush and it functions. Down, hammer drops. Cock hammer, flip up, play in the trigger, no play whatsoever in the hammer. Okay? And then we put the other side in, which is your ambi safety making it ambidextrous make sure that fits flush and the two little dovetails mate see that's got a that's got a groove a little tongue and groove so that's got to mate with the other side and again that has to mate with no play okay so that's in the off position, hammer falls, okay, we flip it up, hammer doesn't do anything. Switch hands, same thing, hammer falls, okay, cock the hammer back, flip it up, same thing, okay. So this one I'm happy with. So again, unless you're prepared to do this and do this right it has to be gotten correct I cannot stress that enough so with that let's continue reassembly so let's pull this apart and put a little oil Again, this is just a little bit on there and on there. That fits in just like that. And again, at that half release. Okay. And you know what? We should put our spring in a little bit of oil in the spring all right that goes in like that okay let's put that in there and we have to compress the spring and plunger to get that to go in there like that 
and where is my makeshift compression tool? Let's use a use a pin for right now. All right, come on. takes a little finagling but it will go in as long as this doesn't shoot across the room there we go perfect okay so that's safe that's off safe perfect off safe hammer falls on safe hammer does nothing that's what we want Okay, so let's put a little lube on this side, get that together. And this is the other side of the ambay safety. Get that lined up and it should just squeeze in there just like that. Okay, let's try that lefty. That's off safe, perfect. On safe, does nothing. Excellent, very happy. That is the way it's supposed to work. Okay, so let's put on our magazine catch and then get our grips back on. So our magazine catch is here, okay? So put a little move on that like I do on everything. Magazine catch drops in. And then... We're going to go, we're going to push the magazine catch just slightly out. There is a groove in here, which I showed you before, I think I showed you before, that that catch has to go into, and then it will spring into place. So let's get that turned. Got to catch it just right. Come on, baby. Did I catch it? Nope, I didn't catch it. Am I using the wrong size Allen key? I might be. Nope, I'm using the right size Allen key. See, that's how it springs out. So, let's get it back in there. Okay. All right, so let's get that. Perfect. Once it springs, it's in there. There's no reason to continue to turn it because it's not going to turn. All right. So that's the magazine release. Make sure that springs. Obviously no interference in there. And now we can go ahead and put our grips on. So let's put our right side grip on. We machine that out. And these are rubber grips. So I just, I did that before I believe with a razor blade and that grip keeps the right side of the safety in place and just like everything else these screws don't have to be monster tight
All right, so that completes the assembly of the lower frame. Okay. Pushing. Okay, goes in and rotates to the side. Put in our spring and then our button. This really does take some experience to install. All right, that's a bushing goes all the way across. Our spring goes in. Our guide plug goes in, and that's the way that goes in. And then I can move that just to keep it, and then use the tool to go the last little bit. Until it peeks in. And that is our assembled 1911. Safety works perfect. Okay, left handed. Okay. Very happy with that. Okay. That's it. Wipe that bad boy down. And we're ready for range day. And my Dexter safety and our mainspring and magazine well. 